All right, thank you for watching this project help video for lesson one. I will help you answer each question in the project by providing step-by-step -step instructions using example problems. A good example strategy might be to pause the video after each example and then work the corresponding problem in your project. Let's start with question one. Simplify the following expression. All right, so here we're going to be using the three exponent rules that you learned in this lesson. They were the product rule, the quotient rule, and the power to a power, or the power exponent rule. All right, so I'm going to work just like we do in PEMDAS inside the parentheses first. So my first step would be to simplify the expression in the numerator here. All right, so here notice that we have the same base being raised to power. And the product rule states that when we have the same base and we're multiplying with exponents, we add those exponents. So we keep the base the same and we add the exponents. So here I would have that 4 to the 3 plus 7 power divided by 4 to the 3rd. So everything else I copy down to the 4th. And 3 plus 7 is 10. So in the numerator, it simplifies down to 4 to the 10th power divided by 4 to the 3rd power. All of that is being raised to the 4th power. All right, so we simplified our numerator. Now I'm going to still keep simplifying inside the parentheses here. So now notice that we got exponents that are being divided with the same base. All right, and according to the quotient rule that you learned in this lesson, in order to answer or solve that problem, right, you keep the base the same and you subtract the exponents, always the top one minus the bottom one. So 10 minus 3 is 7. So inside here, we simplify that to 4 to the 7th power. All that is being raised to the 4th power. All right, finally, notice that we have a power being raised to a power. Okay, so that's the product rule for exponents. And according to the product uh, power rule, excuse me, for exponents, we multiply those two numbers together. So 7 times 4 is 28. So we get our final answer of 4 to the 28th power. All right, so then you take that information and find the corresponding name. So make sure that you match your answer to the correct name. All right, let's go to question 2. All right, so now question two has you simplifying this expression, still involving exponents, but now we have variables for our base. All right, but the rules don't change. Right? They stay exactly the same. So over here, I'm going to start from left to right. All right. You could also distribute that too, and we'll do that in a second. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to simplify this right here. Okay, so notice that we have the same base. We're multiplying with exponents. So according to the product rule, we should add the exponents and keep the base the same. So this whole thing, I'm going to keep the base x. And now I'm going to do negative 8 plus 3. And if you have to work this out on the side, go ahead and do that. So negative 8 plus 3. Remember that when we're adding or subtracting with different signs, right? we subtract those numbers. So that's 5. And we keep the sign of the larger number. So this is a negative 5. Okay, so that simplifies to the negative 5th power. I'm going to go ahead and copy down the rest of it. All right. So now notice here, I have this quotient, x and y. Well, if I could simplify that inside those parentheses, I would. Right? But they have different bases. One's an x and one's a y. So I can't do anything with them. But what I can do is apply that power rule. All right, so what you don't see inside here on the x and y are really exponents with a 1. Right, so there's an implied 1 there. And according to that power rule, right, we multiply the exponents inside those parentheses. So I do it to both the x and the y. So I'm going to go ahead and simplify and get rid of those parentheses now. So 1 times 2 is 2, so we'd have x squared. And then again, in the denominator, we'd have y, and 2 times 1 is also 2, so we have a y squared. All right, so now I could think of this as really being over 1 if we want. So one way to simplify this, right, would be to say, hey, we got 
bases that are the same in the denominator, right? They're both x. So according to the rule, we add the exponent. So you come over here on the side, and negative 5 plus 2 is, in fact, negative 3. All right, so be careful with your signs. And in the bottom, we still have a y squared. All right, so now how do we simplify from here? Here's where you're going to have to look at your answers and kind of pick the ones uh, that correspond to the correct answer because they could leave it like this with the negative exponents, all right? Or they could continue to simplify it and rewrite it so that there are no negative exponents, which is generally how you simplify expressions involving exponents. So I'm going to go ahead and do that here. So any time that we have a negative exponent, you know, I can flip it. I can take its reciprocal and change its exponent's sign. So I can take, for example, this x to the negative 3 and move it to the denominator of my fraction and make it a positive 3. And vice versa. If I had a negative exponent in the denominator, I could move it to the numerator and make it positive. All right, so I have this expression. All right, so now if I really wanted to, you know, I could, from this step, I could have moved this y squared. I could have moved it up to the numerator and made it y to the negative 2 if you really wanted to. So you can move, apply that negative exponent rule in either direction. So one way you can make them positive, and if you can make them positive, then you can make them back negative. So I could take both of these and really move it to the numerator if I wanted to and make it like x to the negative 3 times y to the negative 2. So you might see them do that in this problem, or you might see them write it like this as positive exponents. All, th all three of these expressions would be a correct way to write this answer. Right? So you just got to look and see which one they put, because right? they all do mean the same thing. Traditionally, right, when we simplify with exponents, we want this middle one that I wrote here. Right? We want the one without negative exponents. All right, so let's take a look at question three. Again, now we're simplifying with exponents. All right, my first step here would be to simplify in the numerator. So I would go ahead here and keep the base of three, since we have the like bases, and then add the exponent. So if you have to go to the side and go, hmm, in this case, negative two plus nine, work that out, that is in fact negative seven. So I get three to the negative seven. All right, and the denominator I'm going to leave right now. We'll do that on our next step. All right, which is, in fact, the next step that I would do. So there's nothing to simplify now in the numerator. And I'm going to simplify the denominator. Notice we have, again, a power raised to a power. All right, so according to that power rule for exponents, we multiply those exponents. So I'm going to leave the base the same, 3. And then 3 times 2 is 6. In the numerator, I have 3 to the negative 7. All right, so now I notice, right, that, again, I have like bases here, and I have a division problem, so I can apply the quotient rule for exponents, right, which says that I leave the base the same, and then I take the top exponent, the exponent in the numerator, and subtract it from the bottom one. So you can kind of work on the side here. We're going to do negative 7 minus, minus because it's the division, right, minus 6. All right, so we have two negatives. They kind of make a bigger negative. So in this case, we add them and keep the sign, so we get negative 13. So this is 3 to the negative 13 power. All right, so you might leave it like that, or you might apply the negative exponent rule, which says that 3 to the negative 13 power is the same as 1 over 3 to the positive 13 power. So right, because over any number you can think of there as being a 1, Remember, when we have negative exponents, I can pick it up and move them and then change their sign on the exponent from the numerator to the denominator or vice versa. All right, so you might see either one of these answers with left with a negative exponent or like this.